Okay, here we go. So if you watched the last video, I just basically made a bunch of pallets of different positions, uh, doing different things. Um, diff now we have different groups. So now we can really start getting dirty in programming our shows. Um, oops, too big. Uh, yeah, we now we can start getting down and dirty and start really programming this, but uh, I want to show you guys scenes. Scenes can be opened easily by hitting the scene button and double clicking that. Scenes? What are scenes? Uh, we'll, we'll leave the guard button on. The guard button gives me, from just a side note, gives me the ability to record and add and edit, but doesn't give me the ability to play them. Uh, I'll leave the guard button on, so we'll maybe I'll show you an example of that later. S th imagine this. Uh, you remember your old school board where you have scenes where it's just the preset value, the DMX, presets DMX values thrown in there. Well, and it's just like a one-shot thing. You hit that scene, you hit that scene, you know, scene two, scene three. It's not like a cue list. It's think of it as for those who've messed with cue lists a lot. Think of it as just cue list, just thrown about. For those who've messed with scenes on the cheat boards, here's your scenes <laughs> as you would as you would know it. Um, but it's a I like it because it's a quick one-shot of whatever you want to do. Um, pretty much. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just think of it as just a, a one take cue that you throw in there. This was added in I think the Hog Three. Thank goodness. I think it's it's a really useful thing. I use that on every show, and you'll see why here in a bit. Um, now, anyway, so how do I program a scene? You could probably guess after all the stuff that we've done. You probably noticed the pattern how Hog does their programming. I bet you you can guess what it is. Um, and if you want, you can stop the video and try to make one on your own and <laughs> see if you're right. But anyway, so uh, what we can do, we can make our look. So let's say I want uh, position. Um, hit my. I want to select my group first. So I want the studio colors to be a side fill, right? And then now they went to that side fill uh, that I that I made earlier in the last video. And then let's say I want. I want them to be, you know, like kind of washy looking. Uh, I have to did I not select them. Beam, wash. There they are. So I want them kind of wide, so it lights up the sides of their faces really well. And then um, I want the position for my studio colors. Let's say I want them to mix up and go to the back. You notice I didn't select the techno beams because I want to keep them where they are. That was just what I decided to do. I could have selected the techno beams and added them in as well. I could later if I want, but you're getting the idea, hopefully. And now, since I'm on the studio colors, I'll select them again, and I'll double tap my color button. And I want to make them yellow. I look at the wall, and they're yellow. And then I want my studio colors here, and I want to make them blue. And now they're blue. And I like that downlight as white. Let's just keep it like that. So now we're, we have in our programmer, we have a bunch of settings. We have side fill, mix up blue. Remember the intensity is not in there because I have it in one of my faders still and I, I would recommend doing that especially for this. It'll make sense later. Um, let's see. Now I'm going to close out all these. I can just keep hitting close if I want and double click that scene button again and my scene directory pops up. You probably figured it out. Record, select it. That's all it is. It's on guard so it's not going to let me do it. Record, select, uh, let's see. You know what's going wrong? I'm getting a bunch of errors in here, so I hit the back button on my keyboard. When you start seeing red, that means it doesn't like something. And every time you hit the back button, it's just like it was back in the DOS days or in your word processor. There you go. I could hit record scene one on the key on the I could hit record scene one or I could hit record and just select it. Um, I like to just hit record, tap the screen because I have my touch screen. Scene one. We'll just call this one. Um, let's see, we'll call this, uh, set it, uh, general wash, general, or general look, bam, there, there's our general look, and remember, there's information in the programmer, and we can tell because the, the clear button's lit up in red, and I hit the clear button, and magically everything that I set goes away. Now, cue lists act a little different than, I mean, excuse me, scenes act a little bit different than cues. I can hit the general look and it magically goes back to where it was. What's wonderful about these as well, if I hold down, remember the open button, if I hold that down and I select my scene, 
it looks just like the uh, queueless guts uh, or the queue guts uh, when you're opening up a queue but it has an options button right here I hit the options button and you kinda think to yourself this looks really familiar but you can add your release time, your assert time you can add, you actually add on highest takes priority persist on override and <laughs> there's still those master features pretty neat if you ask me um, you can even have some fun with it uh, I can switch the intensity beam crossfade, close it out, and watch this. <laughs> um, I can hit, s on my keyboard, I can hit scene 1 uh, and move 2. Uh, and I have a blank cue list. I, I can even move it to that. And that's really cool. That's just a scene. So it's just one look that I can get. And I can actually just do it like I did with my cue list. Now remember, it's not a cue list. It's a scene. This master is now referring to that scene. And I can even crossfade it with those other looks that I had so far and have some fun with it like that. And that's one way you can do it on the fly. It's uh, bulky because you can only have so many f um, looks. But if you only, let's say you only want three looks, here you go. Now, uh, here's kind of, here, here we pose a problem. It can run the scene, but when I first started messing with scenes, I noticed something really quickly. Like, how do I let release this? It's inserted, it's running. How do I release it? Uh, one way is to run something that'll override it. <laughs> that's, but that's difficult. But if I just want to release it, you might have figured it out. If you remember, hold the release button down and then select the scene. So holding down the release button and selecting that and you'll see it release and it'll slowly release. If I can get it, I'll be totally honest with you. It's always been a little weird. Okay, I did it backwards. I was telling you wrong. So if it's running, that's why I, I don't ever really use a release, and I'll show you why later. I hold down the scene and hit release, and you'll see it release. And then it goes back into gray. It's gone. And you'll see here it's back to nothing. Uh, that I had my other queue running, so I'll demonstrate that again. Uh, I think I can even type it. I don't really do this that much. Scene 1, really? Scene 1, release. Does that do it? doesn't. Hold it down, release. So it's uh, pretty much that simple. Um, in the next video, I well actually let's let's record another uh, one to just to drill this in into home. Um, and besides, we're going to use a couple more scenes to demonstrate some things here a little bit later. Um, let me delete this. Uh, yeah, let me delete this here. Um, Yes. All I did was hold down delete and select the scene. And what I'm going to do uh, typically is for on the, f uh, you know what? Uh, I'm not really sure where to go with this because there's certain ways I could take it. And I, the part of the reason I'm hesitating is because I'm running out of time. <laughs> I'm trying to keep these all down to 10 minutes. But let's do this. Uh, you understand scenes at its very basic level. I am going to move on to macros and macro comments and. I'm going to show you how to do this stuff on the fly. It's it's going to be really fun. Uh, after I hit the macros, and then we can start having a little bit of fun with this.